Hello, and welcome to Let's Talk About Layoffs. I'm Dr. Tracy Schroyer, and in this podcast, we're diving deep into the world of layoffs, exploring not just the challenges they present, but also the alternatives that exist. Through transparency, courage, and empathy, we'll uncover new perspectives and strategies for both individuals and organizations navigating these complex situations. Join me as we engage with experts, share stories, and provide practical insights. Whether you're affected by layoffs, involved in decision-making, or just interested in understanding this critical aspect of the corporate world, there's something here for you. Let's embark on this journey together, rethinking and reshaping the narrative around layoffs. All right, so we're going to start the alphabet with A. So A is for Applicant Tracking System, otherwise known as ATS. And the ATS does not have to be this big, scary thing that some individuals make it out to be. Um, Let me just explain first what the purpose of the applicant tracking system is. So organizations, and not all organizations use one, but I believe the percentage was like 94% or somewhere around there. Um, It's it's mid to low 90s. organizations that leverage an applicant tracking system. So it's a system that allows them to, once somebody applies for a role, uh, it brings it in through this ATS. And the ATS helps to store, it's kind of like a repository of the information. And sometimes these ATS have uh, functionality, whether it's turned on or not, to do different things with the information that they're collecting. And I'll talk more about that here in a moment. Um, A lot of small organizations and probably some mid-sized organizations may not use an ATS. Um, They may not be able to afford it or they may not have enough um, job openings on a regular basis to justify it. Um, So when you go to apply for a role and you're thrown into um, Workday is like a popular one. People will end up having to put their information in. And sometimes you don't even realize what the <laughs> platform is. Sometimes you can look at the URL. Um, but if you're applying on places like LinkedIn, Simply Hired, Indeed, uh, places like that, uh, most of the time from what I've seen is you are put into a company's ATS. So... The ATS is taking the information that you are entering. You would upload a, your resume, typically, into the system. Most of the systems allow PDF, and from what I know, you want to always choose that PDF version. If you upload a Word or some other version, sometimes it won't show up or be formatted the same way, whereas a PDF will always format it that same way. If you do not have the option to upload a PDF, one of the next best options is to upload a Word document that is text only. So you strip out the formatting and that ends up being, you might hear it called like an ATS friendly version. Um, That's the way that I would uh, provide an ATS friendly version. Uh, There are also templates that you might be able to find on the internet that say ATS friendly formats. you have to be cautious. Um, just take a look at those and see if those seem like they would be helpful or not. Typically, they have a lot of the formatting is stripped away and just the basic information is there. And so that um, what the PDF or the Word document or the ATS version or whatever that looks like that you upload typically helps to um, get into the ATS. And most of the time, the ATS will try to pull that information into the fields and have you validate that those fields are correct. Sometimes, and I have found quite a few lately, that they do not. They don't pull it in at all. So you upload your resume and it stands alone by itself, but it doesn't pull it into those uh, fields. So you have to enter that information again. So you can go through and you can enter the information again. This is another reason it's nice to have that Word document that's text only or that ATS friendly because you could take that, open it up, copy and paste things over instead of having to retype things a million times. You're just copying and pasting information. Sometimes what I have done is I 
uh, copy and paste like the job title and I do their scroll to do the years and the roles and things like that. But when it came to the job description and that big text box, I will just write C, res C attached resume instead of even pasting those in. Totally up to you. Um, it may actually serve better to paste those in there so that it's pulling up not only from the resume, but from those fields, if that's the way that it looks at it. Um, so all of your information is in the ATS and on the back end, um, and I've seen pieces uh, from a recruiter's perspective uh, for a, a particular ATS. So on the back end, the recruiter is able to see, okay, so I had 200 applicants for this job role and some ATS, they can enable it to score based on the job description, um, the keywords that are showing up, the experience as a match, and those different types of things. So they might do some kind of scoring to see who comes to the top of that list. Um, I have heard several recruiters say that they go through every single resume. That is very time consuming. So if you think as a candidate, if there are resume or if there are recruiters going through every single resume, this is why it's taking a long time to hear back at all. Um, if most jobs have, you know, hundreds of resumes coming in. So they may use this way to rank things based on their alignment to the uh, job description and then start to look at, you know, based on those that are ranked higher, open up, <coughs> spend 30 to possibly 60 seconds, typically not that long, at those resumes. And so this is why it's so important to make sure that first half of your first page of your resume is like, boom, <laughs> as I told a client yesterday, boom, like, I'm your person, like, I'm your girl, I'm your guy, I'm your person, like, reach out to me. Um, so that they'll either reach out, put you on the list to, you know, do the phone screen, or they will continue to read uh, the rest of your resume, uh, maybe a little bit more in depth, spend some time on it, and decide to reach out for a phone screen, an interview, like whatever that process looks like. Um, so they're going to use the system to really help them to organize. So if you think about, like, if you have uh, Windows, let's say, and you have your Windows uh, Explorer and all your folders in it, so they can keep things organized for each job role. And then within each job role, like who are we reaching out to, seeing who's eligible, who's not eligible, being able to quickly filter um, and get in contact with the people that they need to get in contact for the job role. So a lot of people think um, they're scared and they have to beat the ATS. Um, but I've talked to several recruiters that are like, that's, I don't have to beat the ATS, but one way that you can make sure that you are aligning your resume in a way, or you're aligning your job application in a way that um, does get pulled up and does get seen for the job is one important thing is keywords. So making sure when you're looking at the job description, you're identifying what are some of those keywords and pull those out. One of the things I've done is, um, so I had a client and they were interested in one type of role and they had three job descriptions. I actually printed them out, took a highlighter and I highlighted the key skills so I could see are there key skills that are across all three roles that are important for this type or all three jobs that are important for this type of role. Um, if she was applying specifically to one, like what are some of those keywords so that I could make sure I could customize her resume for that role or those roles and um, have those keywords in there. You can have those keywords in there more than once. You don't want them in there like five or six times, like that's overdoing it, but where it makes the most sense. So thinking about your professional summary, especially for those key skills or keywords that are the, the most important that really stand out across the job or the job roles that you're finding. Also, um, so your professional summary and your skills section, if it makes sense there. And as you're providing accomplishments as bullet points under your work experience, making sure that you're notating those keywords there where it makes sense with your experience and where it's true. You're not going to want to integrate those keywords if it doesn't align, doesn't make sense, and you do not have that experience. 
Um, so keywords is a big thing. Also thinking about the experiences that you have and the uh, qualifications and making sure they're a match. And you also want to make sure that when you're looking at the job description, if it mentions it a certain way, the experience, the uh, qualifications, those types of things, that you're using the same terminology, that it's not slightly different, that if it has a hyphen in the middle of a word, that you're using a hyphen in your resume so that it is more of an exact match because you don't know if those ATS2, if they are doing some kind of matching to those, those keywords, that they're going to skip it if they don't have a certain kind of functionality or advanced functionality to pick it up, if it doesn't have the hyphen or does or, you know, whatever that looks like. So making sure that you're really looking at the job description and pulling out those pieces and that you are aligning your resume, again, where it makes sense, where it's true, uh, to those things in the job description so that you can get the closest match possible um, when you're going through the ATS, if they are doing that match on the back end, or if a recruiter is pulling those up and they're not necessarily a match, uh, automated match, that the recruiter is able to pull up your resume and especially thinking about that first half of that first page, that they're immediately seeing keywords, qualifications, experience. So you're really going to want to have a solid professional summary. I also recommend having a headline or a tagline underneath your name and the header. So it really is in the face of the recruiter to say, I am the right person for this role and I align with what you're looking for. Um, so that is, uh, so with the ATS, so the keywords are so important, making sure you're aligning with the qualifications with the experience that there's alignment uh, to make a good match which are, whether it's visually by the recruiter or it is automated in some way um, and I think that's the biggest thing and then making sure that when you go to upload that you're using that PDF or if you don't use a PDF that it's a more ATS friendly so you're stripping away the formatting um, and they're able to access that information. So hopefully the ATS does not feel as scary, a big, hairy, scary thing as it may have been before you listen to this episode. Um, I hope that's helpful. Feel free to jump into the Let's Talk About Layoffs, Navigating Careers and More Facebook group and leave any comments uh, about your experiences with the ATS. Thanks and have a great day. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk About Layoffs. It's been a privilege to share today's insights and stories with you, shedding light on the complexities and alternatives to traditional layoffs. Remember, in every challenge lies a chance for growth and positive change. I'm Dr. Tracy Schroyer, and your time and engagement with us today means a lot. For further insights and resources, please visit our website at letstalkaboutlayoffs.com. Don't forget to subscribe for the latest episodes. Until next time, keep exploring innovative approaches to the challenge of organizational change and workforce management.